The Army is very proud of the new American city they've built to practice martial law. The government really can do something quickly. They built this 300-acre city in just two years. Compare that to how long they take in your city just to build a road. But then they did have $96 million of your tax money to play with. To transition from an army of execution, doing what we've got to do, to an army of preparation to be ready uh, for what comes next. This is a place uh, where we can be creative and you can come up with solutions for problems that we don't even know we have yet. The public may not know the problem yet because they haven't yet executed the false flag event that they'll use to openly activate martial law, but the military has been creating scenarios where they can justify a move against small town America for quite some time. And they've made it clear that their enemy is gun owners, veterans, those who want a small limited government, and Christians. The UK Telegraph reported that the town was complete with a subway, railroad, football field, and mosque. Mosque? That's not a mosque. That's a small town Christian church with a steeple and Gothic windows. Mosques have minarets, rounded arches, etc. It's not that they've kept the current military's attitude toward Christians a secret either. It was the U.S. Army that conflated the Ku Klux Klan with mainstream Christian groups like the American Family Association or the Family Research Council, calling these mainstream evangelical groups hate groups. In just the last year, an official Army email and briefings at both Fort Hood, Texas and Camp Shelby, Mississippi attacked Christian groups and said they don't share Army values. And as we've shown you many times in the past, U.S. military documents describing CONUS operations, that's the continental United States, where rules regarding the use of deadly force in confronting dissidents are made disturbingly clear with the directive that a warning shot will not be fired. Or this document that talks about policies that would be applied within U.S. territory with the internment, resettlement, indoctrination, and re-education of political dissidents using their social security number. Clearly, it's not for foreign operations. And finally, I think it's significant how detailed these buildings are. They could easily train for foreign urban warfare using concrete shells of buildings which are cheaper, and that's what they've done in the past. But here they have a completely intact American town, down to the Washington DC subway logos and a small church building. Looks like they're training for a different kind of conflict. President James Madison wrote, the means of defense against foreign danger have always been the instruments of tyranny at home. But as Alex